cute fair that I just designed. Um, his pattern's going to be available in my Etsy store. I'm going to show you how to make a pink version of him today, but you can see here he's got jointed arms, um, but a very simple kind of two-piece body, so he's nice and easy to make if you're a beginner to this. So one of the first things you're going to need is you're going to need a couple of colours of felt. One is for the face, that's the white here, and the other, the pink, is for the main body. And you need all your pattern pieces, which you can see I've cut out here already. And I tend to use these water erasable pens in order to mark out, uh, mainly because I don't include seam allowances on my pattern so that they're easier to scale up or scale down. Now this bear you can easily scale down to half size, but I would suggest that you make the arms a little bit chubbier if you're trying to make like a little baby bear to go with your set. So I'm outlining around the whole piece and I tend to outline the darts as well as you can see here, but I won't cut those out completely. The beauty of felt of course is that you don't have to worry about fur direction like you do with mohair when I'm making my traditional bears. So you can fit the pieces in really, really close together. And also with those um, open seam allowances, the edges don't have to be absolutely perfect for you to know where you are sewing. Now the mask is slightly different because uh, we're going to cut right on the edge of the mask because it does represent the, the absolute edges of the face. So this one I can wedge it right into a little corner, but the dart there we shouldn't be cutting quite so close and I'll show you that in just a second. So you can see here I'm cutting straight across that dart because we need that fabric in order to be able to sew this piece together. So use a nice sharp pair of scissors to make your life easier. And then don't forget with the main body pieces that you need to leave a seam allowance, whatever you're comfortable sewing with. I tend to leave about somewhere between three and five millimeters. because I'm gonna trim it again later with the felt anyway. So there you can see I've left the main dart body pieces just to make it easier to pin together later and sew, but I will end up trimming those pieces off. Now on this particular bear, and there are three options here as far as I can see, um, I'm also going to sew a little hood um, to give it a neck frill, which is really, really cute. You don't have to do this. If you're totally new to this, you can just use the pieces that we've cut out so far um, and it will still make a really cute bear. You just won't get the frilly neck that you'll see later on. So he's going to need um, four pieces in order to make that extra head. So starting with the body pieces, you're going to fold it in half and pin it so that we can sew those central darts. Now the way I like to do this is I put a pin through a piece that I'm gonna be able to find on the other side, like a corner, put the pin through the other side, the matching half, and then fold it so the pin is straight, and that means that you know that those lines should line up nice and easily. You can double check that by pushing another pin through the line. And then I'll do the same thing further up the body just to check that the whole body is lined up. You can see that it's totally not lined up. So rearrange it, push the pin in where it should be, move the fabric until it is straight and then pin. And that should mean that you get the exact shape of body that you want. For this bear, the seams is all that's making the shape. There's no real um, thread sculpting or scissor sculpting available because of course it doesn't have fur. So it's really important to get those seams absolutely perfect. For the hands, less important, but obviously you still want to make sure that you're going to have enough fabric on each side to make those arms complete. And then the hood, make sure that you're sewing the, the edge that has the indent second, because that is the sides of the head, and we want those bits to be a continuous line all the way around the top of the head. Okay. So we're pinning the bit that has like a little indent on it. Now I'm going to machine sew these pieces together, it's something that I prefer to do because it makes the seams a bit neater and it's obviously a lot quicker as well. But you can hand sew them, that's fine. Um, you want to use a back stitch and some extra strong thread in a thread colour that matches what you are sewing. Um, if you use normal thread there's a huge chance that when you turn them around they're either going to be able to see the seams or they're just going to burst open when you stuff. Okay, so you can see here I've stitched straight along that marker line, that's why I prefer to pattern design this way, it makes it so much easier when you have seam allowances that are odd shapes. Um, you don't have to worry about thinking about where you should be sewing because there's a line showing you straight away. So you can see there, just follow straight along that line. And now with the arms, it's slightly different. You do want to leave a gap, probably about uh, half an inch long in this case. So all the way around and then leave that half inch gap, that uh, one, two centimeter gap, just so that you can turn them the right way around at the end. Nice and easy. And then what I'm 
doing here is just trimming off those extra seam allowances and the darts. You can, with felt, you can tend to get about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters away from the seam allowance, uh, from the stitch line, sorry, without the pattern piece bursting open when you stuff it. And that's really nice. With a woven, you wouldn't trust a fabric like this. And getting really close to that stitch line just means when you turn it around, you get a really smooth line finish as well. So the next step, that's going to be the front of the bear, and this piece can be the back. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way around they are, because they are identical. You're going to put right sides together, so those are the sides that don't have the visible seams on them. And then again, using that pinning method, just to make sure that all of your seam lines are lined up. I tend to do a pin where the darts are first, so I get those bits exactly right, because it's going to be really obvious if your bear doesn't match. Um, if those aren't exactly in the right places. And then um, I might start at the top or the feet, depends on the pattern piece, but just work around with pins, making sure that everything's even and he's ready to go. There we go. So this time you want to leave quite a large gap, so around the edge and leave about a one, two inch gap, just so that you can turn this body piece around when you are ready to stuff it. There was a little bit there that I wasn't too happy with, so I restitched that bit of the seam, and then I'm just using a pin here to pull that extra line of thread out, um, snip it, and then unpick the rest. Obviously, if you've got a seam ripper, that would be an easier thing to use in this instance, but I couldn't find mine. So I'm just picking it out by hand. It works just as well. I'm about to make a hideous mistake and that is that I haven't attached the face mask onto this little hood before I've stitched it together so please do not make this mistake um, in the written pattern obviously it will give you instructions on how to do this properly and it also gives you instructions on how to insert the ears at this stage so that you don't have to hand sew them on later this pink bear was only my second version of this bear pattern um, so I was still making mistakes but it's something I've corrected in order to write the written pattern so you can see here I'm pinning, I'm going to sew all the way around the hood, which you will eventually do, but first you need to sew on the bear's mask if that's what you want to be doing, that little white face that I'm adding for detail, because otherwise it is impossible to machine sew it on later. If you want to hand sew it, this is absolutely fine, but I'm a machine sewer, it's what I prefer to do, especially when it comes to neat stitches on faces, so I made a real mistake here. So I just neatened all the seams, turn the hood around, same with the body, and I've left a big enough gap that I can do this by hand, if not you can use pliers. All good. So you need to stitch up this little dart in the face, which means I need to switch my um, cotton now to white. It's really important on this bit that you make sure that your cotton matches your um, sewing piece, otherwise it's going to be really obvious when you turn that face around. So because it's such a small and delicate dart, again I'm using that little pin trick just to make sure everything's perfect, otherwise you're going to get a wonky face on your bear. Now I did think the other day another option for this would be to cut out this shape in the hood, and you could use a contrasting colour, and I did think this would be a really cute way to make like a little Ewok. So you could do the body in the beige, and then you could make the hood in the orange, like the Ewoks have, and then cut out this shape of the hood in, uh, in the hood's face, and you'd have a little gap and then you'd have an orange hood over a beige face. I think that'd be really, really cute. So the next stage in the hood is going to be to cut a little frill. Now I realised at this point that I am a moron, I'm a complete idiot and I should have pinned that on earlier. And of course I've also trimmed the seams at this stage, I've made my life even more difficult. So I'm going to sort of avoid the issue for now and look at stuffing the body. You can see the huge amount of stuffing that I've got here. Um, you do need a lot, you do want to make sure that it's firmly stuffed, otherwise you won't stand. And what I tend to do is use pliers. Um, if you grab the ball of cotton here, or the ball of stuffing, and then wrap it around, you get a really nice, um, firm kind of plug shape, and that's really good for getting straight into those feet and make sure they're stuffed in one go. It's firm, it'll be even from foot to foot, uh, and you don't have to worry about packing in lots of little tiny pieces that might go lumpy later. 
Now with stuffing, you always stuff the extremities first, so always do feet or arms and then the tops of the head before you start stuffing the middle, otherwise you'll find that you have spaces inside of the body where you actually haven't got stuffing and, and your bear will feel really, really lumpy. So use any tool that you like. I really like to use a rubber topped pencil, but this here is a, um, a tool for jointing larger bears, so adding on lock nuts. Most of this bear though you can do by hand, I just tend to use those longer tools just to wedge stuffing in where perhaps I've got a little air pocket that I wasn't aware of. You can see he takes a lot of stuffing, it's very, very deceptive. Now to sew up that opening once you're happy, make sure you've got enough stuffing there. Uh, lock on the thread, again I'm using extra strong thread here. I don't have a pink colour so I'm using white but I'm pretty confident with my skills at doing this ladder stitch. So lock that thread on. I do have a tutorial on my YouTube page on how to do a ladder stitch and there are also instructions included in the written pattern for this bear. But basically what you're doing is you're sewing across the gap making the rungs of a ladder so that towards the end you can just pull it together and the seam disappears. This is so therapeutic. Look at that go. This is the best bit of making any cuddly toy when you can pull that together and you get a seam that's really, really neat. we go. One potato, two potato. Now I have to come to this hood issue eventually and I'm just thinking to myself how do I get that face on. So I'm marking on roughly where I want the face to sit. That's the beauty of using those water dissolvable markers. I can write on there and nothing's gonna happen. Now I know it needs to be pinned at this particular point but the reality is I could hand sew that on but I cannot be bothered. I hate hand sewing on details because I always nitpick on um, things that aren't perfect. So stitches that aren't the exact distance apart, which basically means that I'm gonna machine sew it. I'm gonna cut open the machine stitches. You can't fit it on like that. It's basically impossible. So snip around that seam, open it up again and swear and then cut it out of the video. The stitch that I'm using to sew his face on is called a pin stitch and it's basically like a really neat blanket stitch. I love it. I use it for all my um, felt details. Then I've got to sew back around the outside of the head again just to make sure it's a hood shape. Turn it around. This is where you should have been last time we met this hood. So with the face already stitched on. And basically all you're going to do is pull that over your potato shape. Snip off any hanging threads just to make it neater. Probably easiest to put this on like a sock, and I'm going to say sock because that's the nicest comparative here. Pull it down and make sure it fits neatly over the original seam lines as well. with his position, or his hood's position, you can see it's sort of on the brown bear here, he's got a frilly neck and that's what we want to add onto this guy. So I tend to cut away from the centre line and make random little snips that look like they could be fur. Okay, so it's like a large um, diagonal line and then a more upright line to make the fur shapes, but always cut away from the centre line. Otherwise, it's going to look like your bear is getting know, blasted by some kind of gale. Snip all the way around and then start exactly the same on the back, so cutting away from that central line so everything pushes to the sides of his body. And there you have it. So the next stage for me is to add the face because I love doing this. And for this guy, I'm drawing a little muzzle on. And I'm going to um, hand embroider the nose and I'm going to give him a little cheeky open mouth or a little tongue this time. So I'm going to use a brown thread for the nose, but of course you can use any colour that you like. Uh, this nose stitching is actually going to be one of the main things that holds the hood onto the body. Because I'm not going to sew around that uh, from the edge, that little furry edge. Now you can see what I've done here is I've pinned through the embroidery thread at the top of the face just to hold it in place and make sure that I can get my stitches nice and taut. And then I'm just taking some um, vertical stitches, I always stitch vertically on bare noses because it gives you a better definition over the nostrils. 
and I'm leaving little gaps in between. What I tend to do is sew like a basic layer where there's gaps and then after that I come back and fill in the gaps because otherwise I find that you can get a side of the face which is much more um, tightly sewn than the other side. So again gaps and then fill it in coming back towards the centre of the face. Now my next stitch is always a long stitch over the top. There's a lot of bear artists that can do this on larger bears and they can get absolutely perfectly straight tops of noses without doing this stitch, but I'm not one of them. I tend to sew a lot smaller. So this round stitch across the top tends to, I think it neatens it up and makes it look more finished for me. So I'm gonna push from one side to the other and then bring it out at the bottom of the nose and this thread will then become the septum from the nose down to the mouth. So you can see that looks a lot neater. So then decide where the mouth is going to come out and then basically you're going to pull the needle out through one side, take it back up through that septum stitch, and using the eye of the needle here just so it doesn't pierce the fabric, and then the septum is going to hold that thread in place for you so you don't actually have to stitch it, then take it a little bit further out, I'm doing lots of small stitches here so we get a more curvy mouth and a, a v-shaped mouth on each side. And just keep repeating the same thing on the other side. On the paper pattern again you're going to get instructions on how to do this step by step. Oh, sorry he's off centre here, basically I'm just doing another little stitch. And then I've just pulled the thread out underneath the, um, the hood because that's going to obscure anything that we have. I'm going to lock off the thread at that point, so just doing lots of very small stitches in one place so that it can't unravel. And then I'm going to slip it off. And then the same thing for the top of the face as well. So you've now got a beautifully stitched handmade nose which will hold that hood in place. So the next step is eyes. Uh, I'm going to use glass eyes here, but you could just draw them on. They're four millimeter glass eyes, traditional eyes, or you could use just a little glass bead. Either way will work. The ones with the metal post will just sink a little bit further into the face. Extra strong thread. And just thread that through the center of the metal post. And then you want to tie a knot so that the eye is right in the center of two lines of thread. going to take both of those lines of thread, I'll just neaten them up by snipping the ends off, and put them through the eye of a doll needle. So a doll needle is much longer than a normal needle. Put it through where you want the eye to sit, and then take it out again underneath that hood, because that's going to hide all of our stitches. If you haven't got the hooded bear, that's fine. Just put it through a seam line, and that will make it a lot easier to obscure where you're attaching the eye. Now if you give it a nice pull, that will pop into place. You can also poke this out with a something like a ball pointed owl before you start and I'm going to stitch that on a little bit tighter so that it's sunk into the eyes. Um, the best way of doing this is actually to sew both eyes on at exactly the same time and then combine the threads. So the two eyes on now. We've now got four pieces of string sticking out the back of the head, two from each eye. So take them together, tie them in a knot, and tighten it a little bit. Just double check you're happy with the depth of the eyes here because you don't want to turn them around and have them loose or too tight. Then double knot it, make sure you're happy again, and then finally snip the threads just to make them even, use that doll needle again, put all of the threads in the same place, and just stick the ends back through the same space, doesn't matter where they come out because you're just going to snip them straight off when you are done. just colouring in that uh, face mask. Now I'm using Copic markers for this, but any fabric marker I think would be fine. You could also in theory just stitch this on as a felt layer at the beginning. And then I've just added a cute little tongue with a darker colour. Again that's completely option, you can change your bear's expression lots of different ways. 
and I here am just adding on ears made out of little circles of felt. I've just cut a rough circle and then I'm going to use that one as a template for the other ear. On the actual paper pattern you will get a pattern for ears which can be sewn in at an earlier stage so that you can avoid having to do all this. But the best way always with ears is to pin both of them on first to make sure that you're happy with their position. So you're checking distance from that central dart and also position above the eyes to make sure that they're perfect. So here I'm turning the uh, arms around. This one you do need those pliers for, I think, needle nose pliers, or you can make the opening slightly larger if you want to turn by hand. And again, I'm using that wraparound method just to make sure that it's easy to stuff the extremes, like the far ends of the arms, um, and you get a nice neat finish. So stuff them nice and firmly, make sure they're even. You don't want one really stuffed like hench arm and then the other one really loose and floppy. And what I tend to do is while I'm sewing them I'll curve them inwards as well just to give the arms a bit of a shape. And then it's exactly the same ladder stitch just to close them off and get them ready to attach to your bear's body. So the next stage is to pull the needle out on the inside of the arm like so and to lock off the thread at this point now this thread is going to become the joint for this bear's arm you could use traditional um, teddy bear joints for this or even the plastic safety ones although I'm not a big fan of those um, but this bear I'm just going to thread joint you can also use a button on the outside of the arm to make this even easier for yourself um, I just find that people tend to prefer this version but the button version is in theory a lot stronger because the thread would go all the way through the arm instead of just through one side. So make sure you're happy with the position of the arm, pull the thread through. You wanna make sure the nice neat seam is on the front and then the rough seam that you just sewed up is on the back. So again, bend the arm to face so that nice seam is at the front and then just take a small stitch through the opposite arm, little tiny stitch there, and push the needle back through, uh, maybe about a millimeter over from the original place that the thread came out at and then bring it out on the other side in roughly the same location. So one stitch back through that original arm so that each arm has got two lines of thread going through it. If you've got a child that you're giving this toy to you want to do a lot more stitching and you also want to be very very careful and make sure that you are um, keeping an eye on whether these arms are being pulled off or not because it is possible with this kind of joint. Little stitch back through and then this time I'm deciding to lock off the arms at this stage and that means we're going to pull the thread out back where the eyes thread came out earlier and I'm going to lock off that point so pull that thread tight make sure that you're happy with the placement of those arms and that they both feel um, even you haven't got one that's more tightly joined than the other and at that point you can lock the thread off just do a couple of stitches two or three stitches in the same place I tend to put the needle back through the thread so that I know it's locked on and then I'm going to use that exact same thread to sew on the ears just so I don't have to reattach them. Um, unfortunately I did this quite close to my face so it's hard to see but to be honest when you sew yours from the pattern you're going to make sure that you do all this on the machine or when you first put the hood together anyway so it shouldn't make too much of a difference but all I do basically is switch to a smaller needle and then just use a ladder stitch to sew that ear down in place. see the starts of the ladder stitch there. Once you're happy with one, lock it off and then move over to the other side. Honestly, I would choose to do this the machine sewn way. It just makes life a lot easier and it means you don't have these rough backs of the ears to uh, deal with. So that is basically it. You can see you've got a nice jointed bear here, good solid construction. Just trim off any little bits that you don't like. Um, and enjoy them. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you like making the pattern. Please send me any pictures of any bears that you've made because I'd love to see what you come up with, particularly if we get any Ewoks. Thanks for watching.